Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I hope this finds you well. This week we are in Parsha Bo, the second installment of the book of Shemot, the book of Exodus. So in Bo, we get the second half of the of the ten command of the ten plagues. Um, and Pharaoh finally is like, fine. After the the death of the firstborn, he's like, this is enough. I can't do this. Jews, please just leave. Be gone. And in uh, in that moment. Then God decides that it's time to deliver the first mitzvah of the Jewish people. Okay, firstly, why is this the first mitzvah? Haven't we been getting lots of mitzvot during the beginning? Well, it's the first mitzvah given to us as a people. Because once we've been in Egypt, we became B'nai Yisrael. Because Yaakov, Jacob, also known as Yisrael, uh, sort of was the, the forefather of all of the Jews who lived in Egypt. Because they came over after Joseph was um, was taken as a slave and then kind of rose up the ranks. And then eventually after he's reunited, all of Jacob's family comes back to Egypt and we became B'nai Israel. We're only referred to as B'nai Israel in this first uh, in this first Parsha of Shemot. So now that we are in the second Parsha, we are officially B'nai Israel and we get our first mitzvah. And the first mitzvah is to observe the new moon, to observe the new moon. Why is that the first mitzvah? What is so significant about that? And then if we think about the significance of this mitzvah later, uh, there were only three things that were banned by the Syrian Greeks in the Hanukkah story. It was keeping Shabbat, it was circumcising baby boys, and recognizing Rosh Chodesh. Okay, interesting. So well, let's just start with Hanukkah. Why did the, the Syrian Greeks care so much about Rosh Chodesh? Why, why is it such a big deal? Well, Rosh Chodesh kind of like sets up the whole calendar. Without a calendar, you can't keep time. Without a calendar, you can't keep your Chagim, all your other festivals. So they're actually, they know a little bit about, they knew a little bit about Judaism to know that if they took away Rosh Chodesh, they would take away a lot of other mitzvot in its way. So it's significant also the fact that Rosh Chodesh is on the same level as Shabbat and Brit Milah of circumcision, that shows that it's really significant. But on a deeper level, Rosh Chodesh represents something very meaningful. Rosh meaning head, Chodesh meaning month. And the word chodesh for month comes from the word chadesh, meaning new. So the month itself, the beginning of the month is a total renewal, sort of spiritual rejuvenation. And that each month we get to start over. If our time was based on something more fixed, perhaps we would think that we are also fixed, that we are not changeable, that we are fixed as people. And that's not the case. Rosh Chodesh teaches us this. We have the chance for renewal every single month. Um, and I think something else that's special is the fact that we're not celebrating the full moon. If you know the beginning, uh, the beginning of the month, the, the moon looks like this. It's like a, a race shape, um, sliver. And so, you know, eventually it gets bigger and bigger, bigger. Then in the middle of the month, it's gorgeous and big and wonderful. Everyone loves full moons, werewolves, witches, lots of people love full moons, but we're not celebrating the full moon with Rosh Chodesh. We're celebrating the beginning, the sliver. And what does this mean? This also relates to an idea uh, that we're gonna talk about next week, but we're celebrating the quiet beginning the unglamorous, non-glowy, gorgeous moon orb. We're celebrating the quiet beginnings. And also, if we're talking about renewal and change, that is where the most, uh, the most impact can be made in those quiet beginning moments where we're still trying to, to change ourselves, still trying to grow. So it's just a, a cool idea. Rosh Chodesh is a great mitzvah. Uh, and it's cool that it's our first one as the Jewish people. Secondly, why now? Well, as a slave, you have very little control over your time. So God sending this mitzvah at this exact moment is directly related to the fact that the Jews now did have control over their lives. They, had, they were able to control their calendar, which is a really freeing thing to realize. Um, so I guess an idea to think about is how do we appreciate and, and recognize the fact that we do have control over our time and how different life would be if we didn't. Uh, same thing as, as you know, when we're told when we can leave our homes or when we can't during this coronavirus pandemic. It's, a, it's an interesting thing to think about. The freedoms that we take for granted, such as having control over our time, when taken away, it's very jarring. So yeah, so just some thoughts on this week's Parsha. Thanks so much for listening.